Hello everyone and welcome to 5 of the week. 5 of the week is a weekly recap show discussing the NCAA on the SP forums. Uh, this is our 11th episode. Each week we select 5 topics that have caught the eye or merit discussion otherwise and this week is obviously no different. I am at Okochastar, your host tonight. The podcasting demigod, SBA Forum Freshman of the Year, and unsung hero of simulation basketball, to my right is Waldo. Welcome. Hi. All right. And um, my uh, co-host for this week is... Um, so, I am a cryptic pancake. It'll be hard for me to top Waldo's intro, but... So I won't even really try, but I'm still the athletic director for the Fighting Irish, and I have a player on the Toronto Thunderbirds. All right, and Waldo, for those who don't know, is Jeff Eri Murphy uh, playing his, Cute. I think it's sophomore season. Yes. Uh, for the year. yeah sophomore year for the University of Kentucky Wildcats, uh, six foot seven, powerful, blah blah blah. Uh, he's uncapping. He's a upcoming draftee as well. <laughs> Uh, welcome as the sixth man of the week. A uh, couple of notes before we start off. Robotastic Prime might be joining midway through. I think he's sleeping. Uh, Danger Golding <laughs> will not be <laughs> will not be joining midway through. I think he's sleeping. Uh, and um, yeah, the information might be a bit outdated because I'm also going to present the sim thread i think it's number 12 or 11 right after 12. we're yeah 12 right after we're done recording but uh, yeah the topics are not actually like super well, they're relevant but what's the what's the word specific Relined. yeah specific to this time they're uh, evergreen topics i might say uh, <clears throat> so we'll get on underway our first topic is uh, weird enough, Waldo is here. We're uh, revisiting Jaron Flores and the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Uh, Jaron Flores was unofficially recognized as the league MVP by Five of the Week podcast last season. Um, this season, Jaron Flores, as mentioned, is playing for the University of Kentucky Wildcats. UK is fifth in the Big East division with... 21 wins, uh, three wins ahead of the University of Connecticut Huskies and uh, chasing the Georgetown Hoyas by three wins as well. Um, Jaron Flores has started all 51 games so far, logging a league high, I think 38.6 minutes, 11.2 points per game, 6.4 assists per game, which is actually which has actually dropped from his last season's average of 7.0 assists per game, but a improvement, slight improvement in his three-point shooting, 33.4, and the true shooting uh, is up to 50.5. So, Jaron Flores is obviously a teammate of yours, Waldo. Um, what can you tell us about him? What do you like about Jaron Flores? Um, he's usually active. He's um, hasn't. Uh, you know, scolded me in the past, so I think he's cool. He's obviously carrying our team, and um, I don't like that he's getting more minutes than I am, but that's not what matters anymore. I just want to win a postseason game, or at least make the postseason. Yeah, that's obviously a good stuff. Because I think we're we're three games behind. I think you said Georgetown, right? And Georgetown's a 16 seed. I think actually West Virginia was, because I remember I was trying to bribe um. West Virginia has uh, recently gone up. They're third in the Atlantic Coast Division, so they're much higher now. Yes. Because I was trying to bribe um, uh, Danger last night, I think. With a... Man, if you look at, at Jaron Flores' update history, like, the last few are all just from NCAA exam and development. Uh oh Wait, really? He's not even like... I mean, he hasn't been active in Discord recently. He had two CMAT so tendencies know. last week. Yeah, I know, but it's like... Why is it like split up into like three different... 
uh, the Skynet exam and uh, development, now that it's all SBAO, it's separate. Oh, you know. okay, that explains a lot. It looks like that. Yeah, well, it's kind of ugly. <clears throat> oh. But uh, there's no need to worry right now, uh, because obviously Jaren is getting a mention here, always getting a mention here. Uh, maybe he'll be... Um, well, maybe not. Maybe he'll be inspired to earn some TP in form of point tasks or whatever, press conferences. Uh, oh, it was Adam I was trying to bribe. Not danger. Now I remember. Okay. Bribe Sorry. what? Bribe I was trying to bribe, a uh, trying to bribe, um, bribe Adam to knock himself out of the playoffs so we could get him. Oh, yeah. Like... But I think Adam is already having a bit of trouble with that, like, you know. Yeah, the Oregon Ducks, I, don't, I feel like they're not the team we need to bribe this year. Yeah, because they're already having a rough... I just want to make the playoffs, man. Right. Any there are two wins ahead of us for the 16 seed. Yeah. I yeah. just want to taste. Um, well, I mean, I kind of find it funny. He has the exact same turnover percent, like, uh, percentage they did last season. Like, it's 2.6 turnovers a game both seasons so therefore i guess his assist to turnover rate was better last year but other than that he's really been improving across the board i mean blocks that doesn't really matter because that's just a stupid stat for a guard pretty much but uh if you look at it, everything else he really improved except for assists and so i mean he's not uncapping this year so he'll be decent again next year or the year after, depending on if he stays active and when he wants to get out the NCAA. All right, so yeah, uh, obviously playmaking uh, in the NCAA uh, is a kind of a fluctuating factor, as you can't have shooters surrounding you at all times. Maybe there has been a couple of teams in the history of NCAA here on. RSBA forums that have managed that, but mainly it's actual team ball and set plays other than driving and kicking which feeds your assist numbers in the NCAA. But we'll move on from Jaron and the University of Kentucky Wildcats to Virginia Cavaliers. A smooth segue uh, like Kuzi and Trifecta had, uh, <coughs> like Kuzi and Kendall Battle had. Uh, away from the University of Kentucky to the Virginia Cavaliers. It was not smooth. Regardless of it being either. smooth or not, I think my transition was smooth. So uh, this was not uh, like uh, this was purely coincidental. I just happened to look at their record, starting to improve slowly. During last week's Sims, uh, they had a stretch of games where they went 10 wins and one loss, the loss coming at the hands of the Syracuse Orange at Orange's home court. Uh, that game, DeAndre Baxter also had a prolific scoring night, matching Dougie Thomas's 28 points with uh, his own 28 points, but uh, the Cavaliers as a whole are now starting to find stride and are doing well. Uh, their main players this season uh, and then there's Kendall Battle and Kuzi as mentioned. Kuzi I think has moved to small forward th for this year. And then their main man, DeAndre Baxter at power forward. And then my sixth man of the year, Ham to Trieve at the sixth man slot I think. So the Virginia Cavaliers are 28 and 25 now. Uh, fourth hmm. position in the toughly contested Atlantic Coast division. Uh, what do you give their chances of upsetting the apple cart maybe getting past the mountaineers in the division standings and fending off the fighting irish and the unc tar Heels. um so they're really good 500 team like um they don't really do anything or i mean it's scoring wise and defense wise they don't do anything like extraordinarily they're kind of middle of the pack in both but you could definitely see how in the past few sims they definitely turned like their game around and now they're really looking like a solid team and i don't know it's in the march madness everything's one and done it's really 
an upset can always happen. It's not likely, but if a team that's hot coming into the tournament, they're probably more likely to upset someone. And especially if they manage to get up a few seeds and then they're somewhere around the, I don't know, 10 to 12 range, then I think they can definitely pull up and up, pull off an upset. Uh, yes, most of their upsetting capabilities comes from their great three-point shooting. Both Kendall Battle and Kuzi are hovering around 40% three-point shooting percentage, Battle at 398 and Kuzi well above 40 at 42.7. I believe he's top three in the NCAA so far this season. Uh, then their benchman Hamdu Trieve is also a stretch big of some sorts. Uh, surprising large volume of three point attempts, 163 of which 71 made, uh, which accounts to 43.6 three point shooting percentage. So all in all, they have a lot of threats from beyond the arc. Uh, well then, uh, putting aside your personal feelings and opinions, <laughs> what what do you what do you like about the Virginia Cavaliers, Waldo? Um, in my uh, I'll give you I'll give you two statements here, right? In my completely unbiased opinion, I think they can do well in the NCAA tournament. I think if they hit the three and they can actually play defense, that they can maybe upset a seed, go deep. Um, I don't think they'll win at all. That's completely unbiased. I don't think they have, you know, complete talent unless they just completely, you know, go undefeated the rest of the season. And they do amazing. Um, my completely biased opinion, I hope they lose every other game. And I hope that nothing happens with them. Um, but obviously, it's not going to happen. They're too talented of a team. Um, but yeah, I think I think that if, th if the three falls for them, then it's kind of like Wofford in the NCAA tournament. If you remember Wofford... They played Kentucky, they just couldn't get the three to fall at all, and they lost that game. Yeah, that's... Um, so if that can happen for um, Virginia, then they can win every game they can. Yeah, last year, that's kind of what happened to uh, us in the playoffs. Because, I mean, Joey and me, we were also both, or as a team in general, we shot a lot of threes. It's just in the playoffs, we couldn't score anything. Like with both of us having 17 points, and uh, that seems to be a trend. I think that's in the playoffs more so than in the regular season, where teams that shoot a lot of three pointers they just seem to miss more. I don't know if that's the added pressure, but in, from what I've seen in the past two seasons where I've been around, teams that had a higher inside focus they tended to do better in the postseason. They might be likened to the UND uh, University of Notre Dame Fighting Irish of last season where Joey Hatfield had a 39.4 three-point shooting percentage which dropped all the way to 27.3 in the playoffs at the March tournament and Finn Zenglein, your player, had an even rougher fall from Grace shooting 38.5 during the season uh, all the way down to 22.2 for the postseason so yeah. it's obvious that uh, when it's the March tournament you are in a do or die situation and you have to game plan against a certain specific team which uh, knowing our schedule you can't do necessarily during the regular season because for one sim there's always several matches to play so <clears throat> just uh, letting you two blow your load during the whole year brought you to the dance of March Madness, but in the end, maybe a... Who did you... Didn't you lose to the Ducks? No, we lost to Villanova. Villanova. Yeah, and I mean, neither team could really score. It was a really bad game. Even though you two were very high-skilled during the last season's March tournament, it's if you happen to find a game plan suited to shutting down one or one and a half of you two, you know, uh, it uh, it can be rough if mm. it's if it's you two. But uh, all eyes on the Atlantic Coast Division for the rest of the season. Seeding's tough out there uh, from second position to Blue Devils to 
to the fifth position, UNC Tar Heels. It's only actually six, uh, I mean, seven games, seven wins separating the four teams. Jostling for position there. Um, I mean, even we are not that far out, although we've been kind of having a few rough sims. Yeah, but like, uh, the game you have is up on the Tar Heels. Yeah, yeah, I know, but we're only two behind the Tar Heels, so even we're not that far out from the Blue Devils, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, I, I can mean, see that happening. Yeah. Mind. And you've so. been having a lot of close games. This, yeah. This this past few sims. <clears throat> I mean, then again, I wasn't expecting to really win that much this year. We started off a lot better than I was expecting. Yeah. If you see the in the Atlantic Coast Division, the point differentials per team, uh, Blue Devils at 2.9 up, hmm. and uh, yeah, then it's yeah, Tar Heels, uh, Tar Heels six wins behind, all the way down to minus 2.3. Point yeah. differential so <clears throat> maybe the results the tighter games have been even less in favor of duke than maybe it shows here but uh, mm. enough of the atlantic coast division it's not a topic <laughs> it might just be <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> our third topic of the week with virginia cavaliers and university of kentucky visited uh, our road trip brings us to yes, Where's Louisville? <laughs> I, Louisville. Where's Kentucky. Louisville? Kentucky. Again. Back to Kentucky. Yes. Louisville, Kentucky. That's what it says. Uh, Louisville Cardinals and more specifically their superstar scorer forward Austin Roenick. Austin Roenick has been impressive this season. Uh, second most points per game. Right behind Mr. X of the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Roenick is scoring 31.4 points per game with 33.1 minutes played uh, adds in 6.6 .6 rebounds per game and um, just the typical 0 0.7 0 0.6 steals per game uh, also shoots the three ball quite well uh, for 40.1 three point shooting percentage with actually a solid number of solid amount of 4.3 attempts per game so Austin Ronick Maybe the <clears throat> maybe maybe these it's weird saying this way. <laughs> One of the most prolific scorers in the NCAA this year. Uh, I think he's right on the level of Orlando Villoria, the third. Maybe he has the sim engines favor being a big and being a sole scoring option on his team he has scored 50 points i believe once this season oh no twice uh four times <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, his career high is 60. yeah it was just the recent game versus yukon i think so uh, <clears throat> 51 versus unc in a win 50 versus kentucky their main rivals well mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> It's not my fault, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in a win as well, uh, 50 versus Duke. <laughs> versus Duke. Uh, <clears throat> as well, uh, another win there, as well as the 60 popped versus Yukon, just in the most recent sim during the time of recording. Uh, Ronick, would you agree that he's one of the most prolific scorers? Obviously, you might. Ag you should agree. Well, yeah, obviously. Um... I mean, he's really improved his game a lot. Like, last season he scored like 20 points per game, and now he's all the way up to 31.5. And, I mean, last year I guess he was more of a second string um, because he wasn't the primary option. Now, obviously he is. And he's really been showing that he has what it takes to lead a team in scoring and drag them further than they should be. Last season, the Louisville Cardinals made the March tournament, as we, I believe, reported. Uh, they lost to the Duke Blue Devils by 5 points, 90-85. Austin Roenick in that game, very quiet. Um, 7 points on 3 of 5 shooting. Uh, Ralph Jones and Lagello Thrall, both being the higher scoring options on the depth charts. Uh, 
you might know Austin Ronick a bit better than us, being from the East Coast, and you being from Kentucky. Is Kentucky on the East Coast? I don't know. Um, maybe it, it is. Y- yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> in the we south. We just said Louisville was in Kentucky. Yeah, it's in, in it's in the south. Yeah. <clears throat> the <laughs> European geography, by the way. Uh, so, what 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 do you think about Austin Ronick? Is he comparable to Mr. X? Why? Why not? Uh, he's one of the pr- most, you know, prolific scorers in, um, you know, in the in- NCAA, totally. Um, I think he's averaging, hold on, let me find it. He's averaging 31.4 points per game, which, as you said, I think is second in the NBA, or the uh, NCAA. Um, there's not really any downside to taking him, except the fact you'd be passing up on, um, uh, X, number one overall. Like he's probably, uh, he's on cap in this year, right? Well, he's obviously he's on cap. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, and it makes it better that he also has a three point shot. Um, he didn't shoot. He shoot, yeah. He shot barely any threes last year. I don't know if he shot. At home. He shot a complete zero percent on threes last year. So obviously he upped his game a little bit. He's obviously active enough to be a top pick. And he's also shooting um, more than a, a 90 points better at the free throw line, from 68, 68-4 to 7-7-8. Oh, yeah. Uh, Austin Ronick, uh, well, if you're considering draft picks, like you said, I think he's not on Mr. X's level as a prospect value, but sure, probably yeah. in the tier with still the... still be a great player, though. Yeah, probably right is. below uh, Mr. X in the tier of Cameron Millwall, Primo Zajek. Well, we know <laughs> what's what's up with Primo Zajek. Uh, uh, Pararex's brothers, I don't know if either of those guys are GMs <laughs> anymore. And then... Aren't, uh, they, aren't those both fillers? I mean... They can't be fillers, they're all the way above 300. Oh, yeah. I thought that they were fillers because they had the same name. Yeah, but that's because J Lai and Blue Tarch are bros, I think. Uh, <clears throat> mm. And then there's the first gens, Harkelwood and Orlando Valore. So, Austin Ronick, a very intriguing player, uh, hopes to lead Louisville to another March appearance. And um, why not? Maybe a win this time as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, the All Star selections. Uh, our fourth topic for this week's episode is the All-Star selections and what's going on with the point guards of the NCAA. Um, only recently there were a boatload of point guards drafted to the SBA. Uh, Miles Lefebvre. Who else? Eddie Donovan. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Eddie Donovan. The rest was really all shooting guards. No, no, no. Jad McPherson, yes. So, uh, they were leading the break last season as the main guards, main playmakers for their college cl- college programs. But now, this season 38's All-Star Game participants obviously have your Mr. X's, Orlando Villore at the third, Austin Roenick as mentioned, Cameron Millwall, Alonso Brixton, DeAndre Paxter also mentioned. But then the point guards for both teams, Lou Cipher of the University of Connecticut Huskies, and Amare Creed of the West Virginia Mountaineers. Now, this is no slight to those two guys, but uh, they were totally unexpected selections to me both. Uh, there were, as mentioned, Dimitrius Marquis Xavier, uh, maybe Trey Hudson, maybe maybe a bit of Webster Chokra. But, uh, yeah, uh, what do you think of the state of the point guards in the NCAA right now? Um, so personally, there's really not that many great point cards that are in the NCAA right now, or at least at, at a point where they really have an impact because they're already at a higher TPE level. I really noticed that last week as Robo and I did the mock draft, that like point guard was by far the most shallow position. Like There's a lot of shooting guard point guard combos, but there's not like a primary point guard. And, yeah, I, that's really kind of all I have to say. I, everyone's making... There's so many shooting guards and small forwards coming in. 
um like it's absolutely crazy also all the new people that are currently creating it's like what in the 13 people that created a player in the past few weeks um two of them were were power forwards or centers and the rest were all small forwards or shooting guards yeah and okay there was probably some point guards in too but yeah it's really the main focus seems to be going towards wing players right now all right uh, let me just refresh your memories a bit uh, webster chokra is a point guard point guard Ooh, from the movie. oregon ducks uh, but then there are matteo werner of the florida gators point guard shooting guard but playing shooting guard this season then mark diarani plandoli of the gonzaga bulldogs point guard shooting guard as well but playing shooting guard this season so who are there left aside from Dimitris Marquis and Xavier and the two players mentioned? Maybe Sean Stockton, but yeah. who are your favorite point guards in the NCAA currently, Waldo? Um, ooh, that's a tough decision. You're making me you're making me pick here. Oscar I wanna, with, I wanna go with my own point guards, but I don't wanna be mean to my own point guards. Um I think that there, there's Riley there's no well. way you could go wrong with like top point guards. I do want to point out something. I'm looking at the 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 box score for the um the All Star game, and 55 points were scored by point guards out of 257 points. Yeah, that's that, not point guards. That's yeah. Only point guards. That comes up with the positional fluidity, but there are the like the. Riley Carswell of the Virginia Cavaliers, who is a sophomore, and the freshman, uh, Oscar J. Basilen, a point guard slash shooting guard for the UCLA Bruins, and then I believe your guy, Tuma Jacande, is as well a point guard slash shooting guard, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, but he plays shooting guard, our point guard is Clyde Alexander. Yes. And then it's Ragnar Lesnar. Lesnar. Ragnar is a Scandinavian name and Lesnar is a <laughs> UFC fighter, so <laughs> Ragnar Lesnar. So, um, probably watched the TV show Vikings. Oh, is there a Ragnar Lesnar? There? It's the main character is called Ragnar. Ah, yeah. All right, but uh, yeah, Ragnar is a kind of an old time uh, Scandinavian name. And then there are Hal Maple the third for the Duke Blue Devils, but also a filler. And, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I say a kid, the freshman for the Syracuse Orange. So maybe there are a few point guards to take note of for next season, but for right now, it's um, it's not the most, most hot position. Uh, the SBA draft boards are not filling up with guards right now. So that might make Orlando Villoria the third and Dimitris Marquis a savior and Mark Diarani Plandoli even more valuable because there's not that large of a selection of guard. All right, so we'll move on to our fifth, 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 fifth and final topic of the week, uh, which is Stojan Moldanovic finally making his NCAA decision. Where is this large, large human being? going to commit himself to the next uh, X amount of years. Stojan Moldanovic recently actually released a presser which reads Stoldan, Stoldan, Stoldan. Stojan Moldanovic recently announced he had narrowed his list down to just three colleges. Kentucky Wildcats, West Virginia Mountaineers and the Arizona Wildcats. With no indication recently of which of these three schools seem the favorite, it seems that the wait has ended and Stojan is here to announce his decision. It was a tough decision. Stojan had to choose between a lot of cats and there were only one not wild. All schools promise me great things and do a good job making Stojan feel wanted. Stoja never care about location, but good education important and all schools are good for that. One school above all stand out and I'm expect, excited to be a part of future plans. This is a school that has not had a good history of late, but Stojan will change that. That mm. school is the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Congratulations. I like this one. 
Yes, congratulations. You know? This is my favorite topic. Oh, okay. I was about to say, man, this the second recreate coming to Kentucky. It's kind of crazy. The home of good good. chicken, Stojan pick UK because they promise lots of chicken buckets for Stojan and it just goes on and on. What are your thoughts? You're going to be, well, not his teammate. Um, Yeah, I won't be there next year. Sadly, I'm (coughs) uncapping leaving this year. But uh, the good left undone, a forum veteran, a... Notorious user, also administrator, league commissioner, I think. Um, yeah. So his decision was very highly anticipated, and everyone uh, associated with the University of Kentucky must be very proud that the idea of ICE lured him to <coughs> lured him to this selection. What do you think? Well, I'm a little salty right now because I also wanted him, but I mean, <laughs> I didn't even make it to the top three, so it is what it is. But um, man, once uh, GLUs and what Meme Maestro, once both of their recreates get to their, I don't know, third or fourth year, uh, it's really Kentucky's championship to lose at that point. Whoa, 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 look at all this pressure. <laughs> yeah, it's it's deity. He's he's definitely gonna lose up. Somehow. There can be some way. Maybe deity of ice will come short of expectations once again. That's the <laughs> sure. I believe yeah, I believe it's the third time I've used that exact short of expectations joke. But yes, I think you have a hint of truth there. These two guys will definitely be a force, active dudes, good, good community members, and very, very friendly and outgoing. And to add to that, they're also almost certainly going to be max earners, and yes. that along with then once they do decide to retire their main player, that carryover TP is going to give them a nice boost. Yes, uh, I believe I also was in the race for signing Stojan Moldanovic, and I'm not even a athletic director, so Stojan probably had some confusion there, but <laughs> I'll take it either way. Uh, so, Stojan Moldanovic rounds out our five of the week. Uh, we'll have a short, really short, actually, because the scene has to get underway, and I have to get to school by tomorrow morning. Uh, <clears throat> a short six man of the week slot dedicated to you, Jeff Erie Murphy. What's your expectations for the remainder of the season and your draft status? Uh, well, obviously, I hope we make March. Um, looking at our team and the momentum that, like, the Irish and then all the, and Georgetown have in front of us. I think we can make the make March. We just have to, you know, work hard. Everyone put in updates. Everyone start earning max. Um, if we make March, even winning one game would be a success, considering how low how low expectations were after both Try and Kuzi left. And it was up to really like me and um, Flores to carry the team. So I just, I mean, for my player itself or himself. I hope to at least go in the first round, so I'm not one of those, you know, second round scrubs, but maybe late first round so I can, you know, join a championship contender um, and not um, join a sucky team, like, um, well, I'm not going to shout out names, but, yeah, I mean, I'm so really yes. you know, hey, I didn't, I didn't say it, I didn't say it, um, hopefully, <laughs> Thunderbirds even. <laughs> if I if I do go anywhere, if I'm I give a number range probably maybe like thirteen. There's how many teams are there? There's twenty four, right? No, or there's thirty two. No, there's a lot less in the SBA. Sixteen. Isn't it sixteen, Finn? Yeah, but it's gonna go up to twenty next season. No, the season after that. Oh, the season after. Shoot. Season four. The next season is thirty-nine. Oh, okay. Well, then it's sixteen right now, I believe. 
Okay, that is okay. So maybe somewhere between like twelve and like maybe early second round, like seventeen, eighteen, is where I think he's gonna go. It's that's a big, big gap, but I think it's work with what you can there. This serves as a great scouting report because no SBA general managers listen to this garbage here. With that, <laughs> we'll be closing our show called the garbage of the week uh, so thank you every much every much everyone so much for listening to five of the week this week um, stay do stay around for the blooper reel right after these messages from <clears throat> our good friends robotastic robotastic prime says my alarm didn't go off loud enough i was sleeping i told him enjoy riding lol so he will and he will not be joining us but joining us this week was at a cryptic pancake yep it's still me nothing's really changed see you next week probably <laughs> and our what was it the podcasting demigod sba form freshman of the year and the unsung hero of simulation basketball no league job it was and it still is waldo hi Watch my podcast. That's not as good as this one, but still semi-decent. Watch this podcast. If you're listening to this podcast, do listen to this podcast. We'll be back next week, and uh, obviously recommend this to all of your friends. Bo, recommend this to Nano, so he will listen to it. Goodbye! Bye! Hey, here we are. Um, <clears throat> one, two, three. My name is Sato Kochestar. Uh, I'm a cryptic pancake. Is it me now? Yeah. Oh, and I'm Waldo. <laughs> Hi.